Teachers of Reddit, what is the strangest thing a child has brought in for show and tell? A girl in first grade once brought in some eggs from her farm that were ready to hatch, along with some form of heating lamp. It took until the next day, but they finally did. All except one. When asked why that one egg didn't hatch the teacher didn't know how to respond, but the girl's father, the farmer, flat out told us well that their chick is dead, which caused roughly 70% of the class to start weeping. One kid was so upset he threw his lunch box against the wall. The cheap plastic latch gave way and his lunch fell to the ground with a thud, and his can of you who burst as it hit the floor. The crying ceased almost immediately, and was replaced with laughter. I like to imagine it was just funny that his drink exploded, but it was more likely that we were a bunch of jerks who thought it was hilarious that this kid wasn't going to eat lunch that day. Wait, what was the question? Not a teacher, but I work at a school and am frequently in kindergarten classrooms. This happened in September. I'm in this one junior kindergarten classroom, think barely 4 year olds, working on a computer while the class is doing their show and share thing. The kids are showing their stuff, really happy to have me there, so I can make a big deal over their toys, when one boy gets up, and has his hands behind his back. He's shy and a bit solemn, so the teacher has everyone quiet down, and she asks this kid, what he brought in. Everyone is super silent, watching wide-eyed as he brings out a tiny little ceramic jar that has a glued on lid. He says he brought in his daddy. Kid fucking brought in some of his dead dad's ashes. Ah, show and tell. I remember second grade fondly, as that was the last time I saw milliseconds. We survive. It began with a toad. I thought that a toad would be the perfect object to show the rest of the class. The girls would hate it, and the guys would love it. Brilliant. So I put the toad in my Hello Kitty lunchbox, and hid it all morning. When lunch came around, I borrowed food from my bestest friend whilst holding my own lunchbox in the coat closet show and tell would be glorious. I was the seventh child to go. I remember because there were six kids ahead of me, and six always comes before seven. So there I was, holding my lunch box, when lovely milliseconds. Weiss calls on me. Molly feed, what do you have to show the class? It was the moment of truth. My little second grade hands were sweating and quivering as I unbuckled the box. The toad was silent. Dead silent. But alive, nonetheless. And when the lid finally creaked open on well-oiled hinges, I smiled and placed the box in front of me. Oh man. It was like a Rube Goldberg machine from my darkest six-year-old fantasies. First, Sylvia flinched. That was all it took for the toad to leap into Ross's lap. He was thrilled, but Ambrosia, on his left, was not. She screamed and ran towards the door. Kevin decided to be a hero. He had brought a slingshot to show and tell. I think you can see where this is going. As Ross moved to catch the toad, it leapt, leaped, but more quickly, out of his lap, and across the choo-choo train carpet. Poor milliseconds. Weiss wanted to maintain order, but there is simply no wrangling with 26 little feet all scurrying about whichever way with regards to the obliviously innocent toad hopping about. Michael cowered in the corner, tears streaming down his cherubic face. Aliyah was trying to console him, but that's difficult when a toad is staring straight at you. Ambrosia looked sick. James was working together with Ross. Jesus and Robert were laughing at the girls. And then Kevin got his hands on the toad. Milliseconds. Weiss wasn't fast enough. In a strangely fluent motion, no doubt honed from weeks of summer break spent slinging shots, he loaded the frog into his slingshot. He aimed at the window and released. The window wasn't open, and the frog hit the glass and exploded. Milliseconds. Weiss wasn't ready for this, she was just an elementary teacher. The class wasn't ready for it, they're just little kids. And I. I was nowhere near ready. But as the blood in the chair slid so slowly down the glass, I couldn't help but laugh since it reminded me of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, when Augustus Gloop is stuck in the tube and can't move forward. The frog was stuck to the glass, most assuredly dead, but trying to move all the same. That was when Michael wet himself, and the perfect pandemonium dissolved into chaos. I remember trying to scoop the frog into my lunchbox, when I realized I would be in serious trouble. All of its pieces were sliding between my fingers, and milliseconds. Weiss was trying to quiet a chaotic classroom whilst trying to get me to stop. 
but I had to scoop up the guts into the waiting arms of Hello Kitty, or I'd have the longest time out of my life. I hated second grade. Had one first grader boldly stand in front of the class and tell about the time she ran through a sliding glass door. She whipped her dress over her head and showed the class the scars of the hundreds and hundreds of stitches she had to have done at the hospital. Funniest kid I ever had in class. Drove the other teachers nuts, but I thought she was awesome. On a field trip to the Natural History Museum, the docent stood by life-sized models of a T-Rex and Triceratops. The little girl in my class waved her hand wildly. Who op? Who op? Guess what? There's a dog bigger than those near my grandmother's house. The docent politely said, little girl, dogs will never grow to be that large. And that six year old replied, lady, have you ever even been to my grandmother's house? In kindergarten, I had a friend who was wearing a sweater with a bunch of farm animals on it. When it was her turn for show and tell, she stood up and pointed to her sweater. My teacher immediately said you can't use the clothes you're wearing for show and tell. And my friend looked at her pointedly, lifted the mouth of the cow on the sweater, and pressed a button. The cow mooed. The class applauded. I was the worst at show and tell as a kid. I don't think I really grasped the concept. Highlights. The mostly decomposed carcass slash bones of a dead cat that I found under the house, much to the horror of both the teacher and my parents. I just thought it was interesting. A recipe for making carrot juice that I insisted on reading aloud in painstaking detail. I was a weird child. When I was younger I was a little sociopathic. In grade 6 I brought in the most important thing to me a jar containing my father's ashes. Only my dad wasn't dead. Actually he picked me up from school that day. Needless to say, I spent a lot of time with a school therapist, and I'm 80% sure it played a large role in my parents splitting up a year later. In grade 4, I brought in an empty hornet's nest from my grandparents, house for show and tell. Amazingly they did not hatch until after I had done my little presentation and then left it on the nature table where all the other nature themed show and tell items from the week were. After the first two hatched the teacher put the nest in a jar and six more came out. This wasn't exactly show and tell and maybe it's not really strange but I want to tell this story. When I was in grade 2 or 3, we had this counting jar, and every week a kid would bring it home, and put a bunch of shit in it, and bring it back, to school where we'd all take guesses on how much stuff was in the jar. So, it could be marbles, or legos or jelly beans, or whatever, and whoever guessed closest won a candy bar or something stupid. Anyway, one of the kid comes one week with literally three pieces of painted macaroni. That's it. It's been like 20 years, and I remember it like it was yesterday. He had this giant jar, and there were three different colored pieces of macaroni sitting at the bottom. Then the teacher looked at him, and was like dude, you can't just have three pieces of macaroni. That's not enough. Everybody knows it's only three pieces, you don't even need to count them. And then the kid started crying, because he worked really hard on those three pieces of macaroni. He painted them himself. He was very proud of himself. But it was still such a shitty job on his part. I mean, come on. Three pieces of macaroni? I used to have a pond in my backyard that toads used as a breeding ground. So one day I took a huge bucket of tadpoles in for show and tell. I even brought in a diagram of how they grow. One kid offered 10 cents to buy one. I don't know what caused me to demand 25 cents, but from then on I made close to $40 from all the kids trying to buy frogs from me, but none ever survived, cause the kids had no idea how to take care of them which led to them repeatedly buying more until the season was over. My dad's a collector of military assault rifles. He also happens to have an old antique rocket launcher that was for one use then you ditch it. Already used back in the day, I asked him to let me take it to show and tell when I went to a private Christian school in elementary school, and he said sure. We assumed it was fine as there was no way to arm it, and and the guts had been removed, it was mainly a prop for show, or to place on the mantle. I took it to show and tell in 4th grade. When I brought it out of the box in front of the class my teacher was scared shitless. Everyone in class thought I was a badass as I extended the barrel and set up the scope, while trying to show my teacher look it's fine it's just a grenade launcher what's wrong? It was confiscated, and cops came to check to it out. My dad was called in, because of the drama. 
he came and talked to the police there, and they understood our side of it, said don't bring it back, but dismissed it all, and ended up staying for like a good hour on campus talking about guns with my dad at which point I went back to class. I was popular as shit that week. When she was young, and attending a Catholic girls school, my mom decided that she should ask my grandfather, a doctor, for something to bring into show and tell. He gave her a human brain, presumably from a cadaver or something. He put it in a little lunch sack and sent her to school where she promptly plopped it down on the nun's desk to show off with pride. The nun, curious as to what was in this oddly wet sack, peered inside, screamed, and fainted on the spot. Coincidentally, that was the last year she went to said school. One time in kindergarten, it was show and tell, and I realized I hadn't brought anything. Not wanting to be embarrassed, I thought of something cool I had on me I could show. I was wearing this little lacy pink bralette thing, like lingerie for 5 year olds. And while I was waiting for my turn I wriggled it out from under my shirt, and I got up and showed it. The teacher was sitting right next to me and didn't notice. I got a note sent home with me. In first grade we had 26 kids, so we were assigned a letter, and we had to bring in something that started with that letter. Of course I got you. My mom and I searched the house for something that started with a U and cold and think of anything good. I hated dolls. I was a teddy bear girl, so I didn't have any, but my mother had an incredibly creepy 1950s male doll with chipping, probably lead, paint and a missing nose and a hand permanently molded into a jacking off of shape that rested perfectly over his crotch. I introduced it to everyone as an uncle, because it reminded me of my uncle Pat my only uncle. It probably creeped the hell out of everyone, especially the teacher. I often wonder why it didn't occur to either me or my mother to bring in an umbrella. Her asshole hamster, Julius. It bit me when I tried to put it back in its little cage and then ran off and shat everywhere. Couldn't find it again all day. Her dad shows up to pick her up at the close of the school day and is thrilled the hamster is lost because he hates it. He's going on about what a dick the hamster is, when he suddenly yelps, because a stupid furball crawled into his pants and bit his legs, while we were talking. Student here. I brought in a dead bat once, no joke. What's even worse is, that it died, because it was on the ground outside, and my dad had accidentally stepped on it, without shoes. Now that I look back on it, my kindergarten teacher handled it very well. I had it in a Tupperware container and stressed the importance of using gloves to handle the corpses of animals and washing your hands just to be safe, all while reciting interesting facts about bats I knew from David Attenborough documentaries. Now that I remember, in first grade I also brought in three baby birds I had snatched from a nest while keeping them in a sock in a jar. Strangely enough, they took the baby birds away, but no one stopped me with my dead bat, and my teacher told my parents she was impressed with my presentation. I was a strange kid. Arthur Jeagle, fuck me if that's spelled right, once brought in a tarnished silver baby mug, a sock, and a tube of cheap dollar store toothpaste. We all goggled at him, perplexed and fascinated, in our second grade classroom. He proceeds to glop white minty paste all over this mug and rub it in with the sock. At this point, it sounds entirely creepy. It wasn't. Just confusing. Then, suddenly, holy crap. The mug is clean. Shiny, new, like it just came from the silversmiths. Cheap toothpaste is great silver polish. I still clean my jewelry with it. TL. Dr. Toothpaste Bucket cleans family heirlooms. Not a teacher but this is burned in my memory. When I was in elementary school a kid brought in an antique, old, empty bottle of scotch. When my teacher saw the glass alcohol bottle she immediately snatched it up and told the boy he could not use the bottle for show and tell. It was too dangerous. The boy then began to cry hysterically. He was proud of that bottle and didn't understand what he did wrong. It was raw. Apparently his grandpa had just died, and he always drank that particular brand of scotch and this kid associated that bottle with his grandpa. Ops question just made me remember one of my first emotional reactions to something. I had show and tell once in primary school. Half my class forgot to bring something. Anyways, when the first person that didn't have anything with him came up, he just presented Mike, a different classmate. And the following classmate also presented Mike. And the one after that. And the one after that one. 
When our teacher told us to stop presenting Mike we started presenting that Winnie ass of a robot instead. In kindergarten, I brought in my baby sister, who was a month old at the time. Her trick was to sit in my lap while I showed everyone how babies can't touch their hands together over their heads because their heads are too big. It ended with one of my friends calling me a liar because my head is bigger than the baby's head and I can touch my hands together over my head. In kindergarten my grandpa was my show and tell. He was a paleontologist and brought in something that looked like a rock along with a few other things but we are just focusing on this rock. He instructed us to rub it on our face or on our arms. We were 5 years old, so we didn't question him. After we were all done, he told us it was dinosaur poop. The class erupted into shrieks that could be heard by the other classes, and the principal came down to check on us. The teacher then told the principal to feel the rock. I never remember hearing so many laughs. I remember overhearing this story at a family dinner when I was in first or second grade my cousin who is a few years older than me, is mentally delayed. When he was in the third or fourth grade, his teacher asked him what he had brought for show and tell that day. He told her that he brought his dad's tape of naked ladies. The teacher, obviously thinking he had got a hold of his dad's porn wouldn't let him share that day. When it was home time and my aunt arrived to pick him up, the teacher confronted her. Turns out he had brought in his dad's bare naked ladies cassette to play for the class.